Shortly after Christmas, O-Girl Media sat down with the English family. Just eight days earlier, family patriarch Melford English finished his last round of chemo. So I, I regularly did self-exams, self-exams. And just so happened during the course of doing that, I noticed a lump. Mm -hmm. So I went to my primary physician and, you know, he examined me. And immediately he was like, yeah, you need to go see somebody about this other than meet somebody, an expert. Uh, and surgeon examined me and immediately said, yes, this needs to be taken out. After discovering the lump, Mr. English was diagnosed a month later with HER2 positive breast cancer. This drawing illustrates the difference between sales with cancer and without. Uh, getting that diagnosis of, yeah, uh, it's breast cancer. Not only is it breast cancer, but it's um, one of the more aggressive ones. But the good news is that you, we caught it stage one. Finding out the diagnosis caused a range of emotions in Mr. English and his wife, Marlo. And when we got in the car, we looked at each other and it was like, did he really just say that I had breast cancer? I mean... It was so surreal. I mean, it just, it didn't seem real. After being told, you know, we sat in the truck for a few minutes, mm -hmm. talked about it, prayed about it. Oh, I mean, it, and it progressed so quickly from, you know, the, seeing the primary care physician one day to meeting the surgeon the next day to scheduling the, the surgery, the lumpectomy within what two weeks or a week. shock then move to anger <laughs> you know why him melford english is a high school coach who hasn't let the disease slow him down he worked through the first few months of treatment I'm trying to get him to come off of work and go on short-term disability a little bit sooner than he did you know um explaining to him like you know you're walking into fire every day when you go into a classroom full of kids hacking and coughing and whatnot, you know, your immune system is zero. By his side every step of the way was his wife of 20 years, Marlo, an RN nurse. She gathers all the information. She knows all, gathers all the statistics, you know, all the meds. And she's, because she's an RN, she's in touch with a lot of doctors and they kind of give her advice. One of her friends, one of her real good friends is an oncology nurse who works with cancer patients on a day-to-day -day basis. Marlo used her medical background to help her husband successfully battle breast cancer. I, I, explained, I explained it to him, like, you know, you have the lump, but then you have the tissue surrounding the lump. They may take out the lump, but the, the tissue around the lump has already been infected with the, the cancer cells. That's why you have to do chemo to kill all of this around there and, and pray that it doesn't spread. So what I found um, in the research that I did, and actually it was research after the diagnosis, obviously, you know, you find out something and then the first thing that you want to do is find out more about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was looking it up and found out about um, male, male breast cancer, mm -hmm. um, and it's really a rare, a rarity, um, but um, men that have breast tissue mm -hmm. are susceptible to breast cancer. males that have enhanced breast tissue mm -hmm. are susceptible to breast cancer. And so, um, not that I ever thought that that would happen with him, you know, but, um, it, you know, in looking at it, you know, um, he has more breast tissue than the average man. So that's why he would be more susceptible to it than, say, the average guy that doesn't have, is flat chested. Mm -hmm. There's no breast tissue there. With the cancerous lump gone, Mr. English then underwent chemo treatments. And the chemotherapy that I, I took 
it was a very aggressive and specific chemotherapy. Chemo, after the first six rounds, I had a um, bilateral mastectomy mm. where they went in and took all on both sides the breast tissue out. After having that surgery and them taking my lymph nodes out, mm -hmm. there still was some traces of cancer. So I had to do another three rounds of chemotherapy after that. Unlike other cancers, breast cancer can spread throughout the body. Because it want, can come back. Yes. It can come back and metastasize everywhere. Whereas the other cancers, some of the other cancers, um, you know, prostate cancer or even, you know, pancreatic cancer, it's exclusive to the pancreas. You know, it's not going to metastasize uh, elsewhere. But breast cancer can come back in the form of brain cancer, it can come back in the bones, it can come back, you know, on your liver, mm -hmm. um, all different spots. So that's why breast cancer, they, 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 they say that they're going for the cure, but what we're hoping for right now is remission. When treating cancer, there is always the debate between holistic and traditional medicine. You know, that people have said, no, I don't want traditional medicine. I want herbs or, you know, uh, Eastern medicine or that type of thing. And I just would like to encourage people to don't be afraid of the chemicals. Don't be afraid. I mean, it's, it's toxic. Toxic. I heard him from in there talking about, um, it's called a vesicant, and, you know, they put it in your vein, and just the mere fact that if it leaks out of the vein, it can, can, it can destroy all the tissue around the vein. That's, that's the toxicity that you're dealing with. However, however, God made that, <laughs> and he made the doctors, and he made the, the specialists to be able to mix a concoction together to save your life and so I like to you know um, encourage people don't be afraid of the medicine don't be afraid of the chemo continue with those eastern things the family's faith in God has sustained them through this difficult cancer battle I my faith has not wavered mm -mm. not one bit as a matter of fact I mean because I mean it, it's it's gotten stronger mm -hmm. Not only because I know deep within myself that this cancer is, I mean, it's bigger than just, I mean, God is bigger than this cancer. Uh, our church community, our church family, uh, what we like to call it is our forever family. Mm -hmm. Our forever family constantly lifts us up in prayer. Mr. English is sharing his story now to bring awareness Male breast cancer is happening and men need to do self-exams. And, and that, and that too, and without having a history, that too, in my mind, made me think me getting this was per, on, per, on me for me to be able to talk get out and it. talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I, wanted, I want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to do, especially to African-American men, because mm -hmm. It's tr in tradition, we don't go to the doctor. And we have to. We need to take our health more seriously mm -hmm. and go to the doctor, get the test, and especially when you get past 40. I can talk on a broader scale mm -hmm. now about and make people aware of, yes, men get breast cancer too. And, you know, focus a little spotlight on that. My name is Melford English, and I have. Mr. English cancer is in remission. If you stay in remission up to five years, then the likelihood of you being cured is like 95%. Mm. So it's the five year mark that you're, that you're kind of hoping for. So once you get past that, you're prayerfully home sailing. Reporting from Arlington, Texas for Old Girl Media, I'm Olivia Sanders.